In this module, you'll learn how to add a second redundant uplink into the MPLS VPN network to a small remote site that has only a single router. BGP will be used as the routing protocol between the site's router and the MPLS VPN network. To understand this module, you should have basic router configuration knowledge, equivalent to the Cisco's CCNA certification. The first WAN link to the MPLS VPN network, as well as the basic BGP, has already been configured on the site router. You will find the configuration details in the BGP in MPLS VPN single router site video. If you have no prior BGP experience, you should have watched that video to learn the basic configuration commands that we'll use in this module. The service provider has deployed a fast Ethernet connection to your site and given you these configuration parameters. You should be familiar with them. If you're not, please watch the previously mentioned BGP in MPLS VPN single router site module first. To deploy the new link, we'll configure the new fast Ethernet interface and add a new neighbor to the BGP routing process. Then we'll use various show commands to inspect the BGP session state, the BGP table and the IP routing table. To configure the new uplink interface, we'll enter the router configuration mode, select the fast Ethernet interface, enable it and configure its IP address. After enabling the interface, you should see a syslog message indicating that the interface is operational. To configure the new BGP neighbor, we'll select the BGP process in the router configuration mode and add a new BGP neighbor. We have to specify the neighbor's IP address and the autonomous system number in the neighbor command. After configuring the BGP neighbor, you should see a syslog message indicating that the BGP session with the new neighbor is active. To inspect the state of the BGP sessions with the provider edge routers, use the show IP BGP summary command. The last column in the printout should be a number. Text in the last column indicates a problem. If the BGP sessions are not established within a minute, Compare the parameters your service provider has given you with your configuration. After both BGP sessions have been established, the BGP table should contain two paths to each remote destination in your network. Use the show IP BGP command to verify that. The last step in the process is the check of the IP routing table with the show IP route command. As you can see, the IP routing table contains a single path toward each remote destination, although there are two paths in the BGP table. We can add an IP subnet to the show IP BGP command to display detailed parameters of all paths toward that subnet. The printout we get for the 10.0.1.1 prefix clearly indicates a problem. Although there are two almost identical paths in the BGP table, BGP routing process selects only one of them as the best path. As you've seen in the previous demonstration, BGP behaves differently than the other IP routing protocols. Even though it has two or more routes in the BGP table, it will always select only one of them as the best route and use it to forward the traffic. You can instruct BGP to use more than one path toward the destination with the maximum paths router configuration command. After entering that command, BGP routing process will still select a single best route, but it will transfer multiple routes into the IP routing table. The router will then use these routes to perform equal cost load sharing, meaning that each uplink interface will receive approximately the same amount of traffic. To achieve the best load sharing behavior, you should configure your router to use the Cisco Express Forwarding or Ceph mechanism. You use the IP Ceph global configuration command to enable Ceph. Now let's see how this works in practice. We'll enable Cisco Express Forwarding with the IP Ceph global configuration command and BGP load sharing with the maximum paths 
router configuration command. If we inspect the IP routing table after the changes, you'll notice that the IP routing table now contains two equal cost paths for each remote BGP destination, allowing the router to load share the traffic between them. To give you insight into the BGP behavior, let's inspect the BGP table entries for the 10.0.1.1 prefix. As you can see, BGP still selects a single path as the best path, but it nonetheless transfers multiple paths into the IP routing table. This slide summarizes the changes we've made to the router configuration. We've enabled Ceph, we've added another BGP neighbor, and configured BGP load sharing. You've also seen two new monitoring commands that display details of a single IP prefix, either in the BGP table or in the IP routing table. You can find more BGP resources at the following links. The best place to start is the BGP Resource Center located at wiki.nil.com bgp.